Hi everyone, today we'll be carrying on with our lessons on the Cuban Missile Crisis. Now previously, you would recall that we looked at what was it that led to the worsening tensions between uh, the US and Cuba. We learned about the background um, for both sides which um, had laid the foundation for um, the tensions once uh, Cuba, Cuba's uh, original leader of uh, Fulgencio Batista was replaced by Castro and how subsequently Castro's actions um, served to provoke the US and make the US more suspicious of Cuba's intents and furthermore after Castro had developed a friendship with Khrushchev, the leader of the Soviet Union. And we also learned about the US responses to these. Um, of course, one of unease because if you recall, you need to understand this within the context of the Cold War, whereby the there was the huge ideological rivalry between the US, the USSR and their respective ideologies. And of course, Castro was now aligning, aligning himself more and more to the communists and the Soviet Union. And so um, actions which the US took um, in response to the pro um, supposed provocations by Castro merely worsened matters. Okay, and this led to a real build-up of tensions between the two sides. And this ultimately culminated in the event which we'll be looking at today, or at least the, um, the setting up of missiles which led to this event, the Cuban Missile Crisis. And so you can see this cartoon over here. It's also in your textbook. The textbook on page 86. And this is a, a very apt cartoon in showing the tense struggle between the two sides. Okay, I hope you, you are, by now you're able to recognize Khrushchev and Kennedy. Now, I, it's not my purpose here to go into a detailed analysis of this cartoon, but there are many rich details which you need to pick out, and from there you can form an analysis of what is this cartoonist. Okay, this is a British cartoonist, by the way. What is he trying to say? about the Cuban Missile Crisis. Okay, um, also in knowing that this was published right at the end of the crisis. So I want you to pay special attention to things like the positioning, relative positioning of Kennedy and Khrushchev. Look at all of these here, these beads of sweat. All right, look at the positioning of the hands on the fingers on these buttons and where these buttons lead to and all this that this represents. But generally, you can see from here that this is talking about um, this is reflecting the very tense relationship between the two sides. All right. So, what will we be covering in today's lesson or this lesson? We'll be looking at what was it that led to the installation of missiles in Cuba by the Soviet Union. Okay. Why was it that the Soviets wanted to install missiles in Cuba? Okay. Um, again, this is um, uh, with the knowledge of the worsening worsening tensions between. Uh, the USA and Cuba, all right, and we already had learned that the Soviets had established quite a firm, strong relationship with Cuba, and Castro had aligned himself with the Soviets. Remember the sort of bromance between Khrushchev and Castro. Importantly, though, because these missiles were in Cuba, and this is not Soviet territory, this is the territory of a Soviet ally. Why is it that Castro, who had a final say, why did he allow missiles to be installed on Cuban soil? Okay, because installing um, another country's weapons in your territory is is uh, definitely a very big deal. Why did he allow it? We want to find that out as well. Okay, it's not a decision to be taken lightly. So as you can see from this picture, um, the two, Castro and Khrushchev, had developed quite a chummy relationship by this time, and especially since Castro felt increasingly threatened by the US, right? And he wanted to ensure that Cuba was protected, happily protected and duly protected by the Soviet Union in the event of any further US attack on of US sponsored attack at least on Cuba. Alright, so his priority had been to secure what we call a mutual defense treaty with the Soviet Union. Mutual meaning um, both sides uh, play a part, okay, that if basically one side were to be attacked, the other side would chip in, aid in its defense. Okay, so this is very much like a small, smaller version of what you should be familiar with in terms of NATO and the Warsaw Pact, all right? Whereby um, the other members of the treaty will help the defense of one if one is attacked. Okay, so this was Castro's priority. Okay, and in fact, 
um, the installation of missiles would bring the defense of Cuba to the next level would be a step further because this would involve nuclear weapons, okay, which as we already would be familiar with by now, are no small, uh, it's not a small thing, uh, it's a very significant uh, type of weapon with um, severe consequences. Okay. So why then were missiles installed in Cuba? There are many reasons to look at and this is um, these are reasons which come both from the Soviets as well as from the Cubans. Where the Soviets are concerned, uh, one of the reasons had to do with the political gains which Khrushchev would be able to get out of this. Now he would be able to gain what we call leverage. All right? Leverage uh, basically refers to um, influence, okay? getting an amount of influence and increased influence so that he would be more would be, be able to negotiate from a position of further strength okay so let's say if you know a deep dark secret about someone so you can use this as leverage in order to blackmail that person to do what you want okay um, not that i'm encouraging any of you to do that all right so in the case of leverage here khrushchev he wanted to use the placing of missiles in Cuba as a means of leverage so that he could get further concessions regarding the status of West Berlin because if you remember West Berlin um, being a fully um, Western so-called or a US allied um, enclave of West Germany entirely within the geographical borders of East Germany was something which had made the Soviet Union very unhappy right and they wanted to find a way to um, make Berlin fully within the control of the communist bloc, within the control of East Germany. And so Khrushchev hoped that by um, placing missiles in Cuba, this could be used as a way to, um, to put it um, in inverted commas, to persuade the West to give in to um, Soviet demands and um, let relinquish control of West Berlin. Additionally, okay, there's the small matter of Khrushchev's relations with this guy. Now, this guy, I hope you know his name. Uh, please don't get him confused with this. Okay? His name is Mao Zedong. Okay? Um, if you don't know what this is, well, then never mind. But I've had students before who confuse the two. Please don't be one of them. Okay? Now, what happened was uh, Khrushchev, if you, of course, the leader of the Soviet Union, that means the leader of a communist country. And if you would recall from what we learned um, at the beginning of when we studied the Korean War, we would know that China also had become a communist country following the, um, the communist victory, the CCP victory in the, um, <coughs> excuse me, in the Chinese Civil War of, um, ending in 1949. All right, and so initially they were allies in that sense because they're communist allies, right? So the Soviet Union and um, the People's Republic of China were allies, but um, in recent years, recent meaning in the years before 1962, in the late 50s, um, the relationship between the two sides had gotten worse. Okay, um, there's this famous incident <coughs> whereby um, Khrushchev, when he had visited uh, Mao in Beijing, uh, basically Mao uh, sort of embarrassed Khrushchev because if you can see here from this picture, Mao is a very... Um, He's a very adept swimmer, okay, um, but Khrushchev in fact couldn't swim and Mao basically tried to embarrass Khrushchev by um, conducting a meeting while um, Mao was swimming and Khrushchev was uh, embarrassingly just um, in the basically in the shallow part of the pool and uh, basically it's just a very embarrassing incident okay it's very interesting if you want to find out more i can show you the link to this another time uh, but it, to cut a long story short the relationship between the soviets and the chinese was not good okay so it's not so simplistic to say that because they're both communists they get all along swimmingly okay pun not intended or maybe it was all right <clears throat> but um so, yeah, in this case, even though they were communists, they did have their differences, all right? And this um, was what we call the Sino-Soviet split, okay? Sino referring to the Chinese, Soviets referring to the Soviet Union. And they had split, even though they were communists, but they did not get along, okay? And so, why am I talking about all of this? And of course, you can see the cartoon, which is a, is a good representation of that. Mm. In this case, okay, uh, Khrushchev was hoping that by placing the Cuban missiles, uh, the missiles in Cuba, 
this would mean that he was responsible for the defense of Cuba and this would gain the Soviets prestige okay, in, in their leadership in the communist bloc because now there was a Chinese-Soviet rivalry for the so-called uh, leadership preeminence in the communist bloc okay, due to differences in how to go about um, um, you know, uh, in their understanding of the ideology of communism. And now the Soviets hoped, Khrushchev hoped that by placing missiles in Cuba, he would gain a strategic advantage and a, uh, an advantage in power over the Chinese. All right. As you can see here, <coughs> to give the Soviets an appearance of strength vis-à-vis -vis the West and China. Vis-à-vis -vis means um, in relation to, okay, with relation to. So to make the Soviets stronger um, in the context of the, the rivalry with China, at the same time stronger with respect to in the rivalry with the West as well. Now we've already looked at the political gains. There also were um, other reasons, gains which Khrushchev felt would be achieved, which were military or strategic in nature. Okay, and again, you must understand, and I'll say this many, many times, that the Cuban Missile Crisis must be understood within the context of being part of the Cold War. Okay, so in the case of this military gain, which Khrushchev could gain, I uh, could get. All right, since. Uh, as you can see from this map, and already I've talked about this in the previous lesson, that um, Cuba, okay, that's the capital of Havana, is really, really close to the US. And um, that's why the US was so um, worried, so um, even paranoid about the Soviet relationship with Cuba and what this would mean for US security, right? Because this would be a strategic gain for the Soviet Union if they could get an ally. Um, have a communist ally so close to the US, all right? Placing missiles in Cuba, as you can see here, uh, would mean that more Soviet missiles would be able to reach American cities, and this would therefore serve as a deterrent, okay? Deterrent, you must, this basically means that it would deter, okay, or make the US less likely to want to pro to do anything to attack or which may be seen as an attack on the Soviets because if they were to do anything of that sort the Soviets would be able to retaliate by launching nuclear missiles onto the US from Cuba okay so this is the deterrent of course the Soviets would not want to actually use the missiles but this would be always be a threat okay to keep the US from doing anything to antagonize or to make the Soviets more upset Okay, just like how, um, let's say, um, a sentence of possible death sentence for drug trafficking serves as a deterrent against people doing that. Okay, so that's what a deterrent is. All right. Uh, furthermore, in the context of uh, Turkey, <coughs> which was a NATO country, that means an Ameri um, American ally, okay, having missiles, Jupiter missiles, which were um, since they were placed there, this would mean that they would be in the range of the Soviet Union. So, um, NATO missiles, or American missiles, would be able to reach the Soviet Union, right? And this had given the Americans a strategic advantage, right? Because of the closeness between Turkey and the Soviet Union. Okay, Moscow, St. Petersburg, the main cities are just over there. All right. So, um, Khrushchev hoped that by placing missiles, excuse me, in Cuba this would be able to counter the threat of Jupiter missiles in Turkey. So they basically now would be on par once again because the US would have missiles in Turkey to threaten the Soviet Union and tit for tat now the Soviets would have missiles in Cuba to threaten the US and therefore um, they would be, um, they would be, this would help to as you can see then narrow the missile gap and strengthen the Soviet position in the Cold War. Alright, so they would be on par. Where the Cubans are concerned, of course, uh, Castro had his um, intentions were, of course, more focused on his country in itself. All right, he was very worried because now that he uh, had aligned himself with the Soviets and was pretty much anti-American, he was very worried that the Americans would be up to no good with, um, with respect to um, attacking Cuba. All right, he wanted to defend Cuba. All right, especially since, and we had covered this the previous lesson, and also during the role play, the Bay of Pigs invasion and Operation Mongoose, which are both um, US-sponsored attempts to undermine and even overthrow Castro, these had convinced Castro that Cuba needed to defend itself from future foreign aggression, in particular and foreign here, largely from the US. All right, he realized that the US would be out to get him, and so he needed something to 
try and deter once again deter the americans from (um) trying anything funny anymore okay and so he agreed to put this missile for these missiles to be placed in cuba as he believed that this would guarantee soviet protection and thus boost cuba's defence okay so he would stand to gain from this so both (um) the the soviets and castro would (um) stand to gain from this as we have covered from these various reasons alright so the soviets decided to install these missiles secretly okay it's important to take note alright you should probably highlight that on your on your notes okay to present USA with something called a fait accompli and a fait accompli as you can uh, well it's already stated there right it's a belief that the USA wouldn't provoke a conflict once missiles were deployed because they already had been done a fait accompli in French literally means something which already has been done and so since it already has been done it is very difficult very troublesome very leche if you rather, if you rather use that word okay to um, deter to stop or rather to reverse so it since it's already done the hope was that um, he would just get the US to say, oh well, it's ready there, you have to live with it, they can't do anything about it, okay? So, it's, uh, I don't know, something like if let's say I were to tell you tell you that I'm going to give you a huge amount of homework and you're like, oh, I don't want to do it, but then I tell you, sorry, I already have printed it, so we might as well get it done, okay? Um, not the best example, but I hope you get the idea, okay? That's a fait accompli. So, so to cut a long story short, and just to summarize, the Soviets hope that if the Americans were to find out it would only be after the missiles already were placed and therefore they wouldn't be able to do anything about it because they already were would have been placed there all right and so this agreement to place the missiles was finalized as you can see there on 10th June 62 okay and so um, the Sovi Soviet soldiers arrived in Cuba okay to help uh, bolster Cuban defense and of course also to be uh, be there to um, you know ensure that the installation of missiles would go on smoothly and by October the first nuclear warheads had arrived and the construction of the launch sites and the military bases had begun okay and so this would uh, this was basically the event okay the, the actual placing of nuclear missiles which was the basis behind why the Cuban Missile Crisis broke out okay or be behind what happened during the Cuban Missile Crisis which we will cover during the next lesson okay so in review right we looked at from the previous lesson US Cuban tensions okay the background to it we looked at Castro's actions and the US's actions in response and also other provocative actions and how this then led to the decision to install missiles due to reasons both from the Soviet and the Cuban side it was a win-win situation okay and so we've ended this portion of the Cuban missile crisis lesson and we will continue shortly with the next one okay thank you very much see you